So friends, there is a, a topic, a, a certain topic, a particular topic that has a lot of cachet in the more evangelical wings of the church. Uh, in fact, they, they talk about it an awful lot. We, however, we, we here at Hillside Community Church, we in the, this denomination of ours, United Church of Christ, uh, we more generally in the progressive wings of the church, we don't talk about this a whole heck of a lot, barely at all. And I strongly suspect that when I even name this topic, and I swear I'm going to name it in just a second, but I strongly suspect that, that when I name this topic, some of us are going to feel a little bit uncomfortable. I strongly suspect that, that some of us are going to feel a little bit of resistance bubbling up in our stomachs when I say this, especially those of us who were who were raised in maybe a little more heavy-handed religious traditions. So without further ado, the topic I am, of course, talking about is the topic of obedience. Yeah. Oh, do you feel that in your stomach? Clenching a little bit? Obedience. Obedience, a word which descends to us from medieval Latin and means a state of being subject to, in service of, or in compliance with someone or something. Obedience. And it's true, we don't don't talk about this a whole lot in these parts. But if we stop for just even a second to consider it for a moment, I think it's pretty easy for us to see Uh, exactly how much of Jesus' ministry was driven by obedience, and specifically his obedience to the commands of God over and above his obedience to human teachings and traditions and even human laws. And I hate to be the one to break it to you, but as people who at least nominally profess to follow this Jesus fellow, we are called to that same obedience, that same state of being subject to, in service of, and in compliance with the commands of God. Or as our our scripture reading put it this morning, we too are called to walk in obedience. Don't get me wrong. Straight, middle-aged, white, American Christian man, though I am, I, I, recognize, I totally recognize how hard-edged that can sound, especially coming out of my mouth. Uh, but the thing about obedience, sorry, what I want to do here for just a second is to try to ma- take that hard edge off it a little bit, soften the blow, make it a little bit more palatable to us here in the progressive church. So in this short little passage that we heard from 2 John, we heard something about the nature of God's commands to us. And specifically, we heard that God's commands to us is to love one another. Yes, God calls us to love one another. God's primary command to us, the command from which all other commandments flow, is that we should love one another another. Put more simply, God's commandment is simply love. So to say that Jesus was obedient to God's commandments is to say that Jesus was obedient to love. And we who want to follow Jesus, we who want to be something like Jesus, we need to be similarly obedient to love. And that sounds a whole lot nicer, doesn't it? Obedient to the actually That sounds pretty nifty. Obedient to love. And in fact, I would go so far as to say that is meant to be the defining characteristic of those who want to follow Jesus. At the end of the day, it's not about affirming this or that creed, this or that doctrine. It's not about perfect church attendance, although that is certainly not frowned upon. But rather, at the end of the day, we are supposed to be people who in all things are obedient to the demands of love. And I would actually maybe go even further and say that if a friend asks you what kind of people go to your church, ideally you would be able to respond to them and say, well, you know, they're a little quirky, but at the end of the day they are people who are obedient to love. 
And of course, the friend that you say that to would never come to church because that's a really weird way to answer that question. But still, it should be true, right? You should be able to say that about your fellow churchgoers, that they are obedient to love. That is what is supposed to set us apart. That is what is supposed to define us as followers of Jesus. Obedient to love. Mm. Has a ring to it, doesn't it? Just sounds kind of nice. However, however, for as nice and for as nifty, for as warm and fuzzy, for as ooey-gooey and perhaps as, as mamby-pamby as it may sound, that, that phrase, obedient to love, you already know, you already know that it is not. Your life experience has already taught you that being obedient to love is not a nice nor easy thing to do. So let's say, for example, that you are a, a, a parent or an aunt or an uncle or a guardian or a caretaker or a teacher of some kind. Let's say you have some sort of hand in helping to nurture and raise one child or another. If that is the case, then you know, you already know that being obedient to love is not a nice nor easy thing to do. Because if you are obedient to love above all else, from time to time, you are going to have to draw a hard line. You're going to have to make hard decisions that that child of yours will not like, nor will they understand it. I'm talking about decisions that are going to cause that child to yell at you and scream at you and cry at you. And then when they get a little older, maybe slam doors at you and curse at you as well. If you're obedient to love, you're going to tell that child that they, they need to eat those vegetables of theirs. They need to go to bed at a reasonable hour. They need to be home at a certain time. And they are certainly not going to go to that place with that person because you don't want them to wind up pregnant or dead. And does making hard calls like this feel good? No, absolutely it does not. But you're, that's what obedience to love looks like in the context of of that relationship. But you already knew that. And for, let's say for example, you, you volunteer even semi-regularly at a service organization, then you know, right? You already know that being obedient to love is neither a nice nor easy thing to do. Uh, I'm thinking especially today of our, our mission partner over there in Cambridge, the Friday Cafe. The Friday Cafe uh, is a nonprofit that, that describes itself as a neighborhood meeting place where housed and unhoused individuals can gather together and break bread in a safe, non judgmental atmosphere. And specifically over at the Friday Cafe, I'm thinking of those hearty volunteers that help manage the donations table. Uh, so the donations table is where uh, they hand out all sorts of uh, clothing and, and toiletries, socks, those sorts of things. Uh, and from time to time, though, this donations table, they get just uh, in some what are really spectacular donations. They get tents, uh, really nice winter jackets. They get uh, heavy blankets, sleeping bags, that sort of thing. And well, about 30 to 40 percent of the folks who actually come to the Friday Cafe do have uh, housing of some sort. They're either in a shelter or they're in public housing. Virtually everybody who shows up there is operating out of a sense of scarcity. Uh, so when they go through this donation table line, their first impulse is always just to grab that big ticket item without regard to whether they actually need it or not. So to be obedient to love in the context of this donation table, means that you are going to ensure that this limited resource that you have, these, these tents, these sleeping bags, these warm blankets, are going to go to the people who actually need it. So what that means on the ground for the folks who work at this donation table is that they have to have a lot of very direct, oftentimes very uncomfortable conversations to ferret out whether the person who's trying to nab that, that tent is actually living out in the rough or not. 
And sometimes they end up having to tell people no. No, you're in housing. You don't need a sleeping bag. You don't need a tent. No, you have a perfectly nice winter jacket on. You don't need another one. We need to save it for someone who is going without. Does that feel nice? Absolutely not. It feels awful each and every time you have to deny somebody that. Is that the easiest thing to do? No, it's not. It'd be far easier just to give people exactly what they want in the moment. But if you're being obedient to love, it often requires that you do the hard thing. Not the nice thing. Not the easy thing. And last but not least... If you have ever forgiven someone, anyone really, but, but especially someone who has done something nasty to you, something like really terrible, something that most people would consider unforgivable, if you have ever forgiven such a person, then you know, you already know that being obedient to love is neither a nice nor easy thing to do. Because it is far easier, it's so much easier just to linger in that pain, in that anger, in that resentment, and letting it fuel in you a sense of self-righteousness and moral superiority. And to forgive that person, to let go of that feeling of power that you're holding on to, is to humble ourselves, it's to make ourselves feel weak. And while in the long term, forgiveness is always in our best interest because it frees up space in our heart that we may do the real work that God has set before us, in the moment, in the moment, forgiveness often feels like we're being humiliated all over again. Friends, being obedient to God's command of love is not a nice nor easy thing at all, but you all Already knew that. Life has already taught you that time and time again. And I wish I had a magic bullet. I wish I had something to tell you. I wish I had some bit of wisdom I could offer you that would make walking in obedience to God's command of love a more feel good and happy endeavor. That's how you usually want to end a sermon. But I, I, I can't because being obedient to love is hard at times. It is the hardest thing you will ever do in the course of your life. And the solace we find in Scripture, especially now that, that Christmas is behind us and we set our, our eyes now towards Holy Week with it, it, that dark and hard story about the crucifixion, but the solace we find in Scripture is not that God makes this easier for us, not that God takes that burden away from us. But the solace we find is that God knows how hard it is because God has shared in that same struggle to be obedient to love and has shared in that struggle unto death. And through the energy and the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit, God continues to share in that struggle with us such that with every difficult decision we make, every act of tough love, every hard-wrought moment of forgiveness, we become a little bit more like Jesus. And the world we create around us becomes a little bit more like the kingdom of heaven. Friends, in this new year, I pray it may be so. Amen. Thank you.